Does seeing scary stuff give you nightmares? If so, you might want to look away from this part. If you had your eyes closed, it's safe to open them now. This is Steve DeMossi, and welcome to Uncharted DIY. And I'm sorry, some of you had to see that. That was my shop vac after a bit of glass bead blasting and some general shop cleanup. The filter was horrifically clogged, and these things cost around $26 each to replace. At this rate, I was buying a lot of filters. Something had to be done, and I'm going to show you what I did to prevent this from ever happening again. Separating the dust and debris before it even reaches the vacuum stops this nightmare. So I knew I wanted to use a cyclone dust separator. However, floor space in my shop is scarce. So having another gizmo that has to follow the vac everywhere it goes wasn't going to cut it. Keeping the footprint the same as the original shop vac meant stacking the components onto a mobile cart. I saw a lot of shop vac dust separator carts on YouTube, but none of them were exactly what I had in mind. They were complicated or didn't have all the useful and cool features I wanted. Just like taking a plane car and transforming it into an amazing hot rod, I decided to build the ultimate shop vac dust collection cart. Today, I'm gonna show you why this dust collection cart, in my extremely humble opinion, blows the doors off the typical solution. Let me know which hot rod trick you like the best in the comments below. Stay tuned to the end for some awesome tricks that you can use with any shop vac, not just with this top fuel level dust collection system. These will save you time and money. This project is easy to build, but if you'd like a complete parts list, measurements, diagrams, and electrical schematics, you can download plans at UnchartedDIY.com. A link is in the description. The plans also show how to adapt the cart to fit other kinds of shop vacuums, even if they don't have the feet with the built-in tool caddies like my shop vac. First, a quick explanation of why a dual-stage dust collector can turn a shop vac into an effective solution. It won't remove as much of the super fine particles that a well-designed dedicated dust collector will, but one of these isn't exactly portable. In a single stage setup, shop vacuums work by sucking air through the hose into the dust bin and the air is drawn through the filter and out the exhaust. The filter collects what dust it can capture, then blows what it can't out the exhaust and into your workspace. In a dual stage system, the hose first enters a separator that spins the air around. Heavier dust and debris particles hit the side of the separator, causing them to slow down and drop out of the airstream and into a receptacle below. The air that now goes onto the shop vac is much cleaner, saving you money on filters and time spent cleaning dust off of everything. So what makes this design such a top performer? Let's start with the legs. Many of the plans I saw had issues with the legs. They were complicated, weren't that strong, and some were just ugly. Ew! Many designs use adapters to reduce the legs to a smaller diameter pipe to provide clearance between the legs and the shop vac body. It's more work, requires more parts, and skinny legs reduce the sturdiness of the dust bucket and tool platform. These legs use only couplers and pipe. Easier, less expensive, and much stronger. Splaying the legs outward slightly at the top provides clearance and added strength. Adding a bit of duct tape between the couplers and the shop vac feet keeps them nice and strong. I made the legs long enough to leave a gap between the top of the shop vac and the bucket so I can remove the top of the vac if needed. So, do looks even matter for a shop vac? Well, not really, but it doesn't have to look like Homer Simpson built it. One fine looking... Why doesn't mine look like that? I can never find white PVC pipe that doesn't look like it fell off the truck. They're scratched, scuffed, dirty, and they have all that printing on them. Sure, you could paint them, but that's more time and expense, and inevitably, the first time you get anywhere near the cart, the legs will scratch right down to the white. 
Black ABS pipe and fittings saves time and hassle. Some of the fittings are slightly more expensive than PVC, but you don't have to buy and spray paint. Scratches barely show. The platform attachment. All the carts I saw used pipe caps with holes drilled so that they could be bolted onto the plywood and then glued to the legs. This makes the top a pain to remove and requires tools. Threaded pipe couplers make it super fast and easy to remove the top when needed, and they're solid since there's more surface contact. My platform is made from half-inch plywood, making it lighter while remaining strong. I used a jigsaw to cut my openings, sanded, and then painted it so it looks spiffy. The Cyclone. The dust topper from Home Depot is used for many of these carts on YouTube, but I chose to use a Vortex Cyclone since they separate dust and debris more effectively, have a better flow rate, and they're quieter. They pass considerably less fine dust, though when it comes to getting the really fine particles, shop vac based systems can't replace the sheer volume of air that a dedicated dust collector can filter. If you regularly work with stationary tools and materials that produce a lot of superfine dust, you should use a dedicated dust collection and filtration system whenever practical. But keep a shop vac set up around too for those tools that don't have ductwork connected to them. Another important consideration is that when these collectors fill up, they quickly lose effectiveness. With the taller cyclone, the distance from the vac hose and the dust in the bucket is greater so the bucket can hold considerably more before having to be emptied. My cart with a cyclone is taller than using the dust topper, but height mattered less to me than effectiveness. I built and filmed this project using a generic cyclone I bought from Amazon last year. Then, I discovered that all the cheap generic cyclones have mysteriously vanished from Amazon and even eBay. I don't know what happened, but I didn't want to show you how to build something that you wouldn't be able to find parts for. The good news is that Dust Deputy has lowered the price of their base unit that only includes the Cyclone, a gasket, and some mounting hardware. So I purchased one of these and replaced the old one with it. I do like that it's translucent, so I can see at a glance how much stuff is going into the system. The fittings all still fit perfectly, so other than having six mounting holes on the Dust Deputy versus four on the generic, it was a direct swap. If you see the black cyclone in parts of this video and the whitish one in others, that's why. I used the leftover large circle from the bucket cutout in the platform to reinforce the lid where the cyclone attaches. Otherwise, when the vacuum hose is obstructed, the lid deforms. It also provides a solid mount for one very cool feature you'll see in just a moment. The buckets. When the separator bucket fills up, it loses its ability to do its job and will pass more dust onto the shop vac filter. I used five gallon translucent buckets and it helped, but all that writing makes it hard to see what's accumulating inside. Using lacquer thinner, I removed all of the printing except for the graduation measurement markings on one of them. Pretty cool, right? It was easier to see how full the bucket was, but with light colored debris, it was still difficult. So, lights. This hot rod version solves this problem by adding lights to the lid. There are four very bright 12 volt LEDs. The AC adapter is attached to the lid with Velcro and it plugs in. So disconnecting the wiring to remove the bucket lid for emptying is simple. Between the graduated markings on the bucket and the built in lighting, you no longer have to guess if the bucket is getting too full. And look how clean this filter is. A clean filter means the shop vac can keep running at peak efficiency. Now it's a piece of cake to view how much is in there and keep the filter and shop vac itself clean. The fittings. The fittings I used are simple, strong, and they save a bunch of money over purchasing dust collector and vacuum specific adapters. I used long sweep 90 degree elbows so the airflow isn't restricted by a tight radius. These attach to the cyclone with rubber couplings, making a flexible connection without costly adapters. The attachment to the shop vac is a 45 degree elbow with one end sanded off just a bit. I tapered the grind slightly so it fits securely. The electrical. Having one cord running to the work area greatly simplifies using other tools along with the vac without a tangle of cables waiting to do the constrictor thing. There are four outlets. 
Two are always on and two are switched. I plug the shop vac into one of the switched outlets so I don't have to reach for the switch on the vacuum. This switch controls two of the outlets and this one turns on the lights. The wiring is pretty basic, but if you'd like to see exactly how it was done, the plans available on Uncharted DIY include wiring diagrams for this and for the LED lights. Onboard storage. Since space is at such a premium in my shop, it was important that the accessories fit in the same footprint as the shop vac itself. I added hangers under the platform for the shop vac cord and extra hose. And yet, more light. Have you ever been vacuuming out the car in the driveway and suddenly the sun decides it's just done for the day? A metal strip is mounted so I can use my rechargeable magnetic work lights and adjust the position just so. Now, for those of you that stayed until the end, here are those bonus tricks I promised you. The first one applies to dust separators. Does your bucket collapse like this when the hose is obstructed? After a while, it won't return to normal. The solution is to put the bucket into another one. Problem solved. Another great trick for any shop vac is to use pool scrubber filter socks over your shiny, new, expensive filter. They're easy to clean and inexpensive enough to just toss if they get too gross. These will save a ton of money on filters. For the final trick, let me show you this automatic switch. With this, you plug a power tool into this outlet and the shop vac into here. Now when you turn the power tool on, the shop vac automatically starts up. When you shut the tool off, the switch waits seven seconds to clear the remaining dust in the hose and then shuts itself off. You'll find links for these in the description and on UnchartedDIY.com. When you purchase using these links, Uncharted DIY will make a small commission at no extra cost to you and it helps us bring you more high quality content. If you haven't already, please make sure to like this video so YouTube will show it to more people. This is Steve, and thanks for watching Uncharted DIY.